I've been employed to bring you back. And that's just what I'm going to do, Mr. O'Reilly. Like it or not. Have Gun, Will Travel. Starring Mr. John Daner as Paladin. San Francisco, 1875. The Carlton Hotel, headquarters of the man called Paladin. Hmm. Hmm. Ah. Dancing girl missing. Soma Valley's Armenian colony today sadly canceled its annual wine festival. Because the principal dancer is reported to have eloped. Uh, Mr. Paladin. Quiet, hey boy. Yes. To have eloped with a passing cowboy. Huh. The girl's father, Samuel Abaginian, has offered Mr. Paladin one thousand dollars for her return. Huh. Local authorities point out that she is of age and they have no jurisdiction in the matter. Uh, fire! Fire! Oh, a, a joke! Ha ha! Yeah, here you cigars. I brought them. Oh. Wait a minute, hey boy. I uh, I want you to send this wire for me. Oh, hey, you leave again already? Mm-hmm. Uh, there. I haven't had a good shish kebab for years. Rice pilaf, paklava. Paklava? Armenian cooking. Oh, yeah, paklava. Mm-hmm. Now, after you send that, get me two seats for the ballet russe two weeks from tonight. Well, you saw Mr. Paladin. Uh, you be back? Oh, I'll be back. Better get that wire off right away. Yeah, you saw Mr. Paladin. Even if you've had embarrassing dandruff for years, you can get rid of it now in three minutes. That's all it takes with Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo. Yes, unsightly dandruff's gone in three minutes with Fitch. Quickest, easiest of all leading shampoos. What's more, using Fitch regularly is guaranteed to keep embarrassing dandruff away. Just apply in the unique Fitch manner. Before you wet hair, rub in one minute. This way, Fitch shampoo penetrates right down to the scalp. Next, add water. Lather one minute to wash every trace of dandruff out of your hair. Then rinse one minute. All that loosened dandruff goes down the drain. In three minutes, with Fitch, one rubbing, one lathering, one rinsing, dandruff's gone. At the same time, gentle Fitch can leave your hair up to 35% brighter. To get rid of dandruff problems forever, brighten hair too. Use Fitch regularly. Get Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo today, only 59 cents. The sun was warm. The sky was clear and the grapes were harvested. And all that was left was to press them in the vats and wait for them to become wine. An ancient vocation of an ancient happy people. And their leader was a great giant of a man named Abaginian. Stop that frightful music. It sours the grapes before they are crushed. Husband, must we mourn forever? We have other daughters. Coming to your ear, woman, is a blow for my fist. Ah. Do I produce daughters for every passing stranger? Do I beget children to populate foreign villages? Prepare me an answer. You. There's another one. Huh? Ah. <laughs> you. Out. Good afternoon, Mr. Abergin. Out, I say. Out. Do we disregard hospitality? Out. My name is Paladin. The name is of no importance. You're like the other one. The stranger carrying a weapon. You are... Paladin? That's right. Oh. <laughs> Woman, where is our hospitality? I have his certificate. We have exchanged words in the telegraph. Move! Now, what sort of man was this O'Reilly? Oh, a despoiler of women. An infidel with evil in his heart. Only a boy, scarcely in his twenties. You have no acquaintance with the world, woman. This girl of ours, Paladin, even though she is a dancer to warm men's hearts, she is a lamb, a mouse, 
an innocent mouse. She was seen to kiss him the night before. Ah, next comes my fist to your ear. If our Helen was seen to kiss him, that was a matter of force. Paladin, have you ever seen a snake transfix a mouse with its eye? This O'Reilly, this is such a reptile. Dangerous. You can overtake them? I think so. Good. Both must come back. There must be a marriage. A marriage? Custom. They have been together four days and four nights. Oh, of course. Now, what about the fee, Mr. Abogini? Oh, <laughs> I am a poor man, Paladin. A few acres of worthless vines. But I am generous. Although it ruins me for this simple task, I will pay you two hundred dollars. The price we discussed was one thousand dollars. Too much, too much. Well, since you say this O'Reilly is dangerous, now I must ask two thousand. Oh, have no faith in my description. <laughs> well, Paladin, I'm a poor farmer. On my knees each night I will send you my prayers for your entire life, my gratitude. No. Five hundred dollars, my last offer. You have a thousand acres, vines, sheep, goats, but for friendship, fifteen hundred. Well, then have no faith in these stories of wealth. I have been living above my station. My prayers, the prayers of the entire colony, the thanks of a ruined man, and eight hundred. And I'll have to sell my home and live in a tent to raise it. Mm, what can I do? Such generosity. Twelve hundred. Hmm. <laughs> Nine hundred for a diet of grape leaves the rest of my life. One thousand. Done. Good. All right, seal the bargain. <laughs> Watch you, my friend. Drink of fire. Most men drink one swallow, perhaps two, but Abaginian? Watch. Nah. No, you drink, huh? Of course. Will you pour for me? Mm. Enough? No. Hmm. Enough. <laughs> Here is a man. Go, friend, bring back my daughter. <laughs> yes, of course. I followed their trail out of the Soma Valley and into the high rangelands. Along the way, I talked to a miner, a cowpuncher, a deputy sheriff. All of them remembered Helen Nabajinian quite well. Hardly anyone could tell me anything about her traveling companion, except that he wore chaps and boots and carried a gun. It was noon of the second day when I first caught sight of them. They were resting in the shade of a grove of cottonwood. I dismounted and walked toward them. They were so busy with their problems, they didn't notice. Ma'am, I ain't gonna ride my horse to death for you or no other woman. You don't love me. You're doggone right I don't. I told you that every foot of the last hundred miles. Now... Ma'am, ma'am, look, people just ain't going to believe you followed me. But I cannot go home now. You, you have me compromised. Now that's a lie. I ain't laid a hand on you. At my father's house, you kissed me. Well, I was just funning. There is something wrong with me. No, well, I, I kiss badly. Well, that's not I am ugly. No, I didn't say that. Now, you just ain't my type at all. That's what it is. I don't like to be chased. It makes a man nervous. I'm sorry. Yeah, well, here now. Let me get you up. <laughs> Doggone it! You see? You see, you kissed me again. No, you kissed me. <laughs> now, you ought to be ashamed. Ashamed? Is it so bad that I love you? Mm -hmm. You let me dance for you and no. change your mind. No, no. Now, ma'am. Ma'am, if you so much as move an elbow, I'm going to... Yeah. Oh. <laughs> How do, mister? Miss Abigenian? Yes? My name is Paladin. Your father employed me to bring you back. Oh, man, am I glad to hear that. Both of you, Mr. O'Reilly. Well, what's your father want me for? For a wedding. To her? To her. Look, you don't want to take me back for that. Why, 
A man wants to feel comfortable with his woman. Now her, well, man, just watching her walk makes me feel all edgy. Who wants to spend his life feeling like that? How old are you? Mister, mister, you can talk to your blue in the face. Guns or no guns, I still ain't going back with you, and I'm not going to marry her. Well, maybe it's just as well. A really good girl wouldn't have ridden trail alone with you. You take that back. She's as good as they come. You seem pretty certain. I am certain. It sounds like you just might be in love with her. You take that back, Joe. Jimmy! Oh, Jimmy. Don't worry about him, miss. He's all right. Anyway, he's going back with us. Oh, Jimmy! Jimmy, open your eyes. Did you hear that, Jimmy? You're going no. back with us. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. I'm going back. But just remember... You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. Oh, Jimmy! Doggone it anyway! In the 1800s, the Monroe Doctrine dictated that Americans put a wall between themselves and the world. Today, however, times have changed. From city dweller to farmer... Americans know they are part of the world and close to it. And the more they can find out about it, the better. That's why the broadcasts of Edward R. Murrow and Lowell Thomas are so popular. Each of these internationally known newsmen has a wide background in the history, the politics, the economics on which current events are built. Whether you're interested in high-level affairs of state abroad, economic developments here at home, or the latest advances of science, You'll find them presented clearly and understandably by Murrow and Thomas, with the touch of wit or human interest that has won them listeners everywhere in the world. If you're not already addicted to the news, as CBS Radio presents it nightly, start this week to follow the broadcasts of Edward R. Murrow and Lowell Thomas. They're both heard Monday through Friday on most of these same CBS stations. <laughs> The trip back to the Soma Valley was uneventful. The happy bride chattered all the way, and the reluctant groom grew more surly and silent as the Abiginian vineyards came into sight. Once there, the father-in-law-to-be ordered immediate preparations for the wedding. Aside from half a hundred people scurrying to gather the best foods and wines and music, these orders also included the business of washing up for all. <laughs> When a man has been seven days and nights with a beautiful woman and says that he did not touch her, then you are listening to a liar or a fool. Oh, that's nice. Oh, so now I'm a fool, huh? That's yeah. all the thanks I get for being a gentleman. Now you. Get in the tub off with the clothes, scop. What? Well, I ain't going to take no bath. And I ain't taking off my clothes. Better do it, Jimmy. You, what? Well, okay. These people ain't got no right to pull off my clothes and dunk me in here. Even a barbarian bathes for his own man. And I told you, I'm just marrying her to protect her reputation. That's all. That's all. You can lead a horse to water. But... Into the tub. Hey, oh, don't pour that water on me. <laughs> well, it's the first time I ever took a bath in the middle of the week. There is a woman at the beginning of all great things. Woman. <laughs> Heaven's best gift. You're most delightful of God's creatures. Mm. But can I have a towel? Are you clean? Yeah, cleaner than a new laid egg. Then here's a towel. Yeah. Now, oh, she's getting time for the business of the wedding. Here. Jesh, but don't pour that on me. Oil for fragrance. Yeah. Rub this into your skin. It's very pleasant. Oh, 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 I won't do no such thing. Oh, it smells sweet enough to catch flies. It's customary, O'Reilly. Well, ain't I got a right to have customs, too? Rub it in good. <laughs> you know something, O'Reilly? You make quite a picture. You were... Oh, doggone it. Mm, mm, mm. Shish kebab. Mm. It's not often a man sits at a table like this. Rice pilaf, keskek, kebakl. O'Reilly? Here, you ought to try some. No, no, no. Ooh. Time I was moving along. I went through getting married, didn't I? Mm-hmm, you did. 
But a smart man doesn't ride off at night hungry. Yeah, well, I tell you, I ain't staying now. I done the part. No one's keeping you. Goodbye. Yeah. What's the matter? Don't, don't. I can't run off without saying goodbye to the girl, can I? I mean, after all, I just... Well, I, I just married her. No, oh, it's just a formality. It's like you said, you can lead a horse to water. Mm -hmm. Now, goodbye, O'Reilly. Now, how come all of a sudden you want me to leave, huh? Why is that? Well, you don't seem to care about the girl. Well, maybe it's just as well you don't wait and see her dance. Doggone it. She can just dance her fool head off. I I'll be too busy eating. I'll just be too busy to notice. What is this foreign stuff here? I don't know. Mighty good, though. Mm, here. Here, try this. Yeah, thanks. Mm -hmm. mm. Hey. You really got some good cooks around here. Mm -hmm. mm. You know something, O'Reilly? Bride. Bride always supervises the preparation of the wedding foods. Mm. She does? Yes, she does. It's customary. Mm, is that fact? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, now, you know, just because they don't do things like my people. <laughs> you see, I, I got me four brothers. Well, that, uh, I don't mean ain't. Real down to earth folks now, does it? <laughs> you sound like you're beginning to grow up. <laughs> well, I'm as growed up as the next man. Just because that little Abginian gal gets me. I mean, well, doggone it. Women don't chase men. <laughs> I'm not too sure. What I mean is, a man don't want a wife that chases him. Well, as Helen, man, if I live with her, I. Well, I... Look, look, Mr. Paladin. Just watching her makes me nervous. Hmm? Not so? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, I mean, my stomach flops around, my knees shake. Well, doggone it, she makes me feel downright miserable. A man wants to feel kind of calm, comfortable. Oh, you know? uh, oh, I think they're getting ready for her dance now. Yeah, well, I, I guess I ought to be moseying around. Uh, O'Reilly, you know, um, ancient Armenia was at the crossroads of the world. Mm -hmm. Uh, the origins of her dances are lost in antiquity, a uh, flavor of ancient Greece, uh, Persia, perhaps even Manoa. Uh, such dances, O'Reilly, are a language, the most understandable, universal, compelling language of mankind. Well, maybe so, Paladin, but I'm just... I'm... There's your bride. She's dancing for you. She's kind of... What's that she's wearing? A veil from Persia. Leaving, Mr. O'Reilly? Oh, Mr. Paladin, that's my wife. Do you see speed laws and other regulations as restrictive? Or do you look upon them as protective? When a police officer writes a summons for traffic violations, do you see him as an enemy or a friend? Your life may depend on your attitudes. Statistics clearly indicate that where laws are obeyed, deaths go down. It's no secret that emotional immaturity is the major factor in our accident rate. How else but childish can you describe the notion that breaking a traffic regulation is a way of getting away with something? Unfortunately, too many drivers on the road subscribe to that kind of emotional outlook. The result is tragic. Almost 85% of all traffic accidents in America are caused by careless, childish driving. We hope you know our traffic laws and the people who enforce them are there to help save your life. <laughs> The happy bride and the no longer reluctant groom disappeared from the festivities. Custom. It was also custom for the festivities to continue. The singing, the dancing, the eating. I continued with them. But there came a time when it was time to settle the business at hand. <laughs> you say what? Dowry. Dowry? All right. <laughs> Listen to him. Listen to him, my people. Now, I am a liberal man if he wishes to live with my daughter. But you're mad if you think that... No dowry, no son-in-law. Oh. oh, 
Your own customer, Virginia. I spit on custom. You think I would pay so much as a single goat to mix his blood with mine? You offer to let your daughter carry to marriage her bedding and clothing. Uh, oh. Such generosity should be written on the side of Mount Ararat for all to see. Oh, oh, oh. All right, perhaps I could spare a goat for milk. A goat for milk. Oh, he can spare a goat for milk. <laughs> Beside Abajinian, the poorest Arab in a mud hut is a caliph who dispenses gifts of amber and silver. No. Beside Abajinian, a serpent becomes an animal of great stature and dignity, and a toad becomes an animal of great beauty. Perhaps I can afford an acre of vines. I'm a poor man. Oh, an acre of vines. Now, did you did you hear that? An acre of vines. Come. Let us circulate the news of such generosity. A messenger to the old country. A runner to the next town. All right. All right. Five acres of wines and two of three. No. Ten and five. No. Ten and five with a house. No. Fifty sheep. Oh, no. Yes, ten goats. No. Six carrying milk. All right. Agreed, Paladin. Stop there. You ruin an old man. <laughs> I hope that boy out in his blood. <laughs> his parents had five sons. Five? Well, a busy day, Mr. Paladin, but perhaps not a bad one. Five, you say? He told me so himself. Then perhaps a grandson, huh? A glass of orchie for luck? I'd be delighted, Mr. Abaginian. Hey, boy. Oh, Mr. Paladin, how happy to see you. Did you get me the tickets to the Ballet Russe? Oh, hey, boy, did not forget. Yeah. Oh, that's fine, hey, boy. I'll just... Oh, oh, I am so sorry. So clumsy of me. I, I knocked your tickets away. Perfectly all right. Oh, those are our ballet tickets. Oh, you're with the Ballet Russe? You will see me dance, then. You enjoy the ballet, Mr... Paladin, madame. Uh, As a matter of fact, I do. I saw your company in Paris last year. So? And I'm just returning from a visit where I saw the Armenian wine dance beautifully performed. Oh, yes, I have heard of that dance. Mm -hmm. I should enjoy attempting it someday, but where is there such a teacher? Why do you look at me so? Doggone. What? In my imagination, I pictured you performing that dance, uh, Madame... Petrovna. May I offer you a cognac? Delighted. Gun will travel. Created by Herb Meadow and Sam Rolfe, is produced and directed by Norman McDonald and stars John Daner as Paladin with Ben Wright as Hayboy. Tonight's story was written by Gene Roddenberry and adapted for radio by John Dawson. Featured in the cast were Lawrence Dobkin, Dick Crenna, Lillian Byeth, Virginia Christine, and Lynn Allen. Hugh Douglas speaking. Join us again next week for Have Gun, Will Travel. <laughs>